Hello and welcome back to another 10 minute enterprise. Today we're going to be setting up a remote desktop gateway server. Uh, it's sort of like terminal services except that you don't have to have a license for it. It's actually a feature built into Windows Server uh, and it's really easy to install and configure. There's just a few steps so we're going to run through these now. I've gone ahead and uh, connected our RD gateway server to the domain and I've set it a static IP address just because it's easier to manage that way. And what we're going to start with is we're going to come up here to manage, add roles and features, and we're going to start this little wizard up. We're going to come down to remote desktop services and click next, next, next. And we're going to choose remote desktop gateway. And it's going to say, do you want to add all these features? We're going to hit yes. And install and we'll let this run through its full thing uh, and then we'll pick it up as soon as it's done All right, it has finished the installation. We're gonna hit close. And you can see that there's a couple of uh, new items here. It's added IIS, it's added MPAS, and remote desktop services. Um, the only thing we are really concerned about is actually gonna be in the start menu. So I'm gonna come in here, go under administrative tools. And if we scroll down here, we have remote desktop gateway manager. Okay, and here is our server. We have a couple of policies. Uh, folders here, we're gonna create a couple of policies. They're really easy. Just gonna hit say, create new, run through the wizard. We're gonna create both an RD cap and an RD wrap. Hit next. And you can name it whatever you need to. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna add domain group membership. So I'm going to say domain admins for now. Uh, we can actually add anything. You, if you want to, you can actually add domain users so that everybody can access their own desktops. But I'm just going to use domain admins for now. That's uh, more than adequate. We'll hit next. And we're going to say next on that. Uh, it, this screen, if you need to, you can actually in disable certain types of device redirection. So if you wanted to disable any type of map drives, the clipboard, printers, uh, which I may do that just because printers um, can sometimes throw a lot of errors in the logs that we don't really care about, uh, COM ports, and supported plug and play devices like mice and USB things. So, um, you know, I'm just going to leave them, leave it all for now. Go ahead and hit next. Uh, this is something we do want to check. Uh, enable idle timeout. So basically, it will disconnect the session if whoever was logged into it uh, leaves the session open and doesn't ever close it. If they don't do anything within two hours, it will uh, disconnect the session itself. So that frees, open re uh, frees up more resources. And then we can also do session timeout. Um, we can set this to, let's set this to 180 minutes. I'm sorry. 80 minutes for three hours and we'll hit next and next again now we'll do rd wrap it's already added our domain membership group here so we can hit next and we'll say users can connect to any network resource that's on the local network next uh connections only to port 3389 this is default and Really, that's fine. Uh, there shouldn't be any reason to change this unless you have very specific firewall requirements and you you need to change it for some reason. You can specify it, but 3389 is, is fine because this isn't going to be accessible to the internet. Uh, it's only uh, it's only utilizing RDPs 3389 inside the network. So basically, it's connecting from the RD gateway through the internal network to whatever resource on the network that we're trying to get to. So, next and finish 
Okay, and then hit close. And now we have our two policies. And if we come up here to uh, RD Gateway, you notice there's a couple of things here. It says it's not fully configured yet. So we're gonna right click and go to properties. And the first thing we're gonna do is look at the SSL certificate. So we don't actually have one installed. Uh, we can install one. We can basically just do a self-signed and that's perfectly fine for what we're doing here in, in our lab. And hit apply. All right, after that's done, come over to server farm. We're gonna add this server in here just to make sure it's there. Um, it should have a status of okay. And then we'll hit okay. And now we should be able to try to remote desktop in. So we're gonna try and connect to our FT uh, win. It's our Windows client. And then if I hit admin tech. Now, if we come over here to advanced, we're gonna go to connect from anywhere, click on settings, and we're going to specify our remote desktop gateway. So I typed in uh, rdg.farvtech.com. That would be our public subdomain that we have. And then we'll check this box. It says use my RD gateway credentials for the remote computer. All right, we've got that set Come over here and click connect. And it's going to prompt us for credentials. Okay. And it's going to complain about the certificate. If we click on view, we come over here and we see that it's not trusted. So we click on details, copy to file, save it as a base 64. And I'm just going to save it to the desktop here. Uh, RDG search about that. All right. And click save next and finish. Okay. Okay. Close this one. Uh, we're going to come over here and do the same thing. We're just going to go to MMC. We're going to add snap in certificates, computer account, and we're going to store it under personal import next browse RDG search next, next finish. Okay. It's in there. We're also going to put it under trusted root certificate authorities. Next, browse. Next, next, finish. All right. Now let's try this again. Uh, minimize it. And it's securing a remote connection. And here in just a second, it should pop up and let us connect to it. All right, and we're logged in. And as you can see, I, I have our gateway set up in here. I'm using a, a router called ClearOS. It's just something I found on the internet to, to do this, but it does have a simple port forwarding in here. I'll, as you can see, I've, the only thing I've actually port forwarded is port 443, and it is going to uh, our RD Gateway's IP address internally. So that's it, that's all you have to do. A lot of people will try to use a firewall or a router that has built-in uh, application awareness and a lot of times those require that you install your certificate to those as well they'll do uh, kind of like a reverse proxy they'll accept the connection and validate that everything is correct that you're actually a user trying to log in versus somebody who's just ddosing your system uh, and but you'll install your certificate to that and you'll still port forward 443 over to the RD gateway there's no difference between that so that's it uh, we're logged into our Windows 10 box you can see we've got, uh, there's our C drive. Uh, we can open up Windows Admin Center. There we go. While that's loading, uh, we can come over here and While that's loading, you can come over here and check out our website, SiriusTech.com. Uh, it I post all of the videos that come up every time uh, to the website itself, and just give you a little description about it. There's going to be more updates on this as well, and if you want, there's also wallpapers that you can download for your desktop or your phone. So take a look when you get the chance. All right, so there it is. Windows Admin Center's in here. Uh, 
like I said, this uh, RD gateway is free. There's no license required. The only license you have to have is the license for the desktop that you're logging into. Um, and it doesn't, it's not actually limited to, to Windows 10. You can do it to Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, and Linux as well. There are certain versions of Linux. There's uh, some packages you can download that basically will enable remote desktop services uh, feature in the Linux client or server, depending on what you want to use. And you can remote desktop gateway into those as well. So uh, there's tons of things you can do. And it also works with Azure. If you have Azure VMs, you can also connect to those. Uh, you just have to specify the Azure gateway. So lots of cool things you can do with it. Uh, definitely recommend doing this rather than port forwarding the 3389. That port is very well known across the internet and hackers love to scan for that port and try to brute force their way into your admin account to wreak havoc in your in your environment so this is a, a much much better solution it is like i said secured using ssl and the only port you have to open is 443 so all right i think that'll do it for this video um hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions or comments about the process here please leave a comment below and i will check it out and respond to you as fast as i can or i might even make a video to answer the question just uh if you guys have any other ideas or enterprise technologies softwares that you want to look at definitely leave a comment for that and let me know uh, because i'm always looking for new things to try so thank you guys have a good weekend stay safe